Good afternoon Year 4 and welcome to Friday. You have made it a whole week through our online learning and you've done really, really well. So we thought, just like we'd normally do on a Friday afternoon, we would have your art lesson. Okay, so as you can probably see from the screen, our walk today is learning to explore ways of using and modelling clay. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to drop round each of your houses to drop off some clay. So before we start, can you please go and find yourself some blue tack, some play-doh or anything that you can mould. Pause the video now so you can do that before I start. Okay, hopefully you are back and we can start our lesson today. So we know that we have been looking at canopic jars and in school today we would have been having we would have been having a go at modeling clay for our canopic jars. Um, what is modeling clay? So you've probably seen it outside of our year four classrooms, um, but have you ever used anything before? So I don't know whether you used it in year two or year one at school. Um, you will be using it again in year four, I promise, and we won't just leave it as our blue tack models or our play-doh models but hopefully it'll give you um, a bit of a chuckle this afternoon and you'll be able to have a go at some of the things. Um, the learning pit is there at the bottom to say where you are at the minute with modelling clay. Lots of you might have used it in clubs. Um, basically something squishy that you can mould and make a structure into. Um, some of you might feel really happy with using clay, some of you not so much and I'm one of those people, I don't love using clay but I do find it quite fun so hopefully um, my end result today won't look too bad, you'll have to be kind to me. Um, for our hook today, true or false, clay can be used to make anything. So some pictures of the type of clay that we'd use in school, do you think it can be used to make anything? Uh, fair for class, I know we spoke about making a chair out of clay last week and what might have happened to my trousers if I'd have sat on it. Um, Stowe class, I don't know whether you've spoken about clay with Mrs. Plews, but I'm sure that you can have a think of whether it's a suitable material to be used for anything. So you can pause the video here and have a think. Okay. Lots of you would probably build on and challenge that. It can be used probably to make anything, but whether or not it's the most suitable material would be the question because we have lots of harder materials, um, lots of softer materials because we need different materials for different things. Okay, how can it be used then? So we know we can make things from it. But my question before I go any further is, do you know anyone that uses clay? Do you know any artwork or famous artists that use clay? I'll be really honest, I didn't know many people that used clay. I might have seen some clay structures around, but I didn't know their names. So I did a bit of a Google and I had a look on the internet and there are lots of different famous artists that use clay and they're quite famous for using it and making their structures. We're not going to focus on them all today though, we're just going to focus on one and her name was, uh, is Lucy Ritchie. So she was a famous artist who loved working with clay. Um, she was born in Austria on the 16th of March 1902, so just over 120, well almost 120 years ago um, and she died on the 1st of April 1995, so way before you guys were born. Um, her interest in art was sparked by her uncle's collection of art in Vienna and just before World War II, Lucy fled Austria and moved to London. Here she started her own pottery studio and later in life she taught art to others at a London college. Lucy's work is now displayed in museums around the world such as the Museum of Modern Art in New York and the York Art Gallery in England. Here are some of hers. What do you notice about them? Do you like her work? Why, why not? And it's completely up to your opinion, but here's some of her pieces of pottery that she has made. You can pause the video here to have a little, um, a little longer look at it if you would like. Okay. Today, we were going to, if we were, go if we were in school, we were going to have a play with some clay to see what you're able to do. And my question would have been, can you create anything as good as Lucy Ritchie? So with our clay, which is now our blue tack or our uh, Play-Doh or moldable anything, 
you were going to have a go at creating an animal by molding clay. Just have a think, why am I choosing an animal for you to make today? Is it something random that I thought might be a good idea or is there a purpose to it? Hopefully you've realized there's a purpose because we've been talking a lot about canopic jars and we know we're going to make the jar base, but we know that on top of our canopic jar, there was an animal head. So we know that the original um, animals on top of the historic canopic jars were the four sons of Horus. So there was a human head, um, there was a falcon head. Normally in class, you'd be helping me remember these. There was a jackal and there was a baboon as well, or some kind of monkey. I'm glad I remembered those. Um, Today, therefore, you're going to have a go at making um, a clay animal or a blue tack animal or a Play-Doh animal using your modelling material. So I have some blue tack here and the first thing I'm going to do is to smush it into a ball and I'm going to try and mould it to make some kind of animal. Now, it's not going to be as good as it, was, it, as it would have been if you were using clay. And I can only apologize about that, but hopefully you can still have a really good go. The annoying thing about blue tack, as I've just worked out, is when it goes together, you can see there on my, you have the lines and things in between. And you can see on number two there, it was gonna to be to add a design onto the clay using a variety of tools. I only have a knife at home. So if I move on to the next screen, you can, well, I'm going to do one more. You can see that there would have been different materials that we'd have used in school. So we'd have used some kind of knife, but it wouldn't have been like a dinner knife. And you'd have been able to score some lines and some things onto your Play-Doh or your um, blue tack. And Play-Doh is probably better because it's less sticky. Um, and there are lots of other techniques you can use. Because we can't do that as well as we'd like to today, and because we're only using our blue tack or our modeling clay, I'm going to simplify this task a little bit for us until we get back to school. So your task is to create your animal by molding your blue tack or your Play-Doh, and then to try and add a design on it. If that means you use your knife to score some lines, to make some holes, to do some diagonal lines on here, and if you, you can see a few of the lines I've just scored in there, Obviously, this isn't my animal yet. Um, you can try to do that. Now, the go deep and go deeper today, we are going to completely ignore. So I'm going to take those away because we can't attach clay together, excuse me, when we don't have clay. So these here, I'm gonna get rid of just for today's lesson, but we will remember them for when we go back into school and we can't do our slip either. It's going to be an interesting challenge for you today because we're not using the right resources, but I really hope you have some fun trying to make some kind of animal, some kind of something that would have gone on top of your canopic jar. I mentioned to Fairford class last week that when you did your designs and you sketched them into your art books, that you had to pick a favorite. Now, I know your sketchbooks are at school, but I'm hoping that your memory is good enough to remember what animal you did on top and remember it had to be a real animal couldn't be baby yoda um thank you to my class for coming up with that suggestion but some kind of animal on top of your canopic jar to have a go at for example if you tried a tiger try and make your blue tack or your modeling clay or your play-doh into a tiger head again there's going to be the challenge for you once you are finished it did say you could share them with your partner, but I would love for you to share them with us and send us photos of them and see how well you've done. I can guarantee yours is going to be better than mine because I still haven't been able to mold too much out of my blue tack. Um, and then think about how you are when you've been modeling something. So obviously it's not modeling clay today, but see how you were at using something that's quite pliable. Good luck today. It isn't gonna be an easy task, but I cannot wait to see what you've come up with. If you need any extra ideas, if you scroll down onto the post page, I have attached some of the photos that my year fours did last year when they came up with their animals. Have fun, bye.